What's up, Internet? How you doing? I hope you're doing okay. I'm here hanging out with my 150-gallon aquarium. It's ongoing. It's a never-ending mess. It's just something that I constantly have to work on. But that's not a bad thing. For you guys, check it out today. We're going to be moving some rocks, moving some plants around, and we're going to talk about one of my favorite new-ish plants. All right, so one of the things we got to do today is deal with this. Ludwigia is outgrowing. And I think what this is called now is obviously Ludwigia repens, right? But I think what this is called now is orange juice. I think we're going to call this Ludwigia repens version orange juice, right? Now, typically, you guys know, I will pull a plant, cut the top, and replant it. And I want this one. I want the whole thing. I'm going to take it out and put it in another tank. I want to test its orange juiciness. Let's see if we actually have a variant or if it's just the water conditions in which that one's growing in. But with Ludwigia like this, I can typically trim it right where I want and we can actually just grow a little bush. Um, it'll grow quite tall, but where I'm trimming it, it'll actually grow some new little sprouts. Kind of one of the cool things about Ludwigia repens. It'll actually send out side shoots. It's actually, I wonder if you guys can even see that down there. But it'll send out side shoots in an area like back here where you'll never really notice the trim. Um, but we'll send up new, new ones. So this is one of those times where you can actually just trim and let it regrow. But uh, the downside is once all these little side shoots start going crazy back here, I'll, uh, I'll have to trim the tops and replant it because it'll get too aggressive for the one singular root. Um, you have that one root with a whole bunch of, or you know, the one stem with roots on it, growing a whole bunch of little sprouts off of it. It'll eventually outgrow that and send out so many aerial, aerial roots. Like even this one's grabbing down into the substrate right here. So this one's got so many. Ah, here we go. Here's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. So here's a stem. Of course, it's going to bring up tons of substrate with it. But here's a stem that is one, two, three, four, maybe five different plants growing off of the one original stem. See that? It starts to send out these aerial roots that will grab down into the substrate to try and feed this portion of the plant up here. So that's what you want to watch out for once that starts to happen. Then it's time to go ahead and pull it out because this is one of the plants that I actually just trimmed and let it send out some new shoots, which is fine because, you know, I take one stem and we're actually going to get, you know, five plants from just that one stem. So it is a, a method of propagation, uh, but you do have to kind of stay on the ball with it. You can't just let it happen and walk away for a really long time and then go, why is this a mess? All right, so we've made a little mess down here in the corner. And I think we're going to have to pull those other ones out. My main reasoning for this is that I actually want the repens to be growing more in the back and not so much out here in the front. Point this one back here. See how that looks. Kind of one of the things I don't see very many people do is actually pull plants out 
and then just stick them where you think you might want to do might want them to be later not a lot of people doing that very often i don't see we'll pop some back here see what it looks like if we enjoy it if we enjoy it then we'll plant them if not no harm no foul but as we pull out the repens here we'll notice that there is a ludwigia that i really 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 need to focus on propagating and not the repens because i've got so much of this plant already it's not a concern which the funny thing was i actually got all the way down to um at one point i think i only had three stems of repens left of the of this is the stuff I've been propagating for a really long time. All right, man. we're making some good headway here. But the Ludwigia that's back here that I'm really concerned about propagating is the Sphera Carpa. Now, it's rare, but I think it's only rare just because of how slow it grows. The farms, um, I don't think that there's any farm out there that could keep up with actual production of it. So it's just kind of rare because of how slow it grows, you know, which is more often than not the reason a plant is rare. Um, but this perspicaria, I'm going to have to move this for sure um, because it is going to grow way too tall. It's just going to keep growing taller. Although I am happy to say that it is doing quite well, so I'm not that perturbed. But we do want to leave these little flamingo crypts alone. They have been sending out some little side shoots, but just not, just not enough to really be that excited about, honestly. Not really something to make a video about of like, oh, Flamingo Crips, you know, they're just doing well. You know, I wouldn't say that they're like, wow, oh my God, or anything, but they're just doing okay. They're just growing. Not really propagating and going crazy or anything like that. Maybe someday, maybe someday, but the, that's honestly one of the biggest things that I always have to remind people is that, um, you know, you do get a plant like this pink flamingo. You know, you just, it's really just a matter of patience. It really, really, really is. Um, if you aren't patient with it, uh, it's just not, it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out well for you. Patience is always key. But this is the Sphera Carpa back here, which we've had some fair progress with. I can't, I can't say it's going insanely well, but they are growing and I am confident that they will continue to grow. Uh, set my Perspicaria over here, per Perspicaria. Now is this, did this work out to only be two? I guess there's only two over here, huh? Or did I take one and put it somewhere else? Oh yeah, it's over here. Okay. All right. So the Sphera Carpa is doing well. I am happy that it's happy, uh, but we are going to have to move it, which sucks because you know, like I was saying, when something's doing well, you don't really want to go moving it, but it grew back in this direction back here, which is not going to work out long term very well. So I'm having to make the 
educated decision of, all right, I'm gonna move it. Um, I'm not that happy about having to move it, but it is what it is. Move them up to the front so you can keep an eye on them. Um, there, that'll work. Okay, engage planting tongs. Burp. So some people thought that this was the Perspicaria Sao Paulo, but this is not. This is the Kawanagian, I think I'm saying that right. Probably not. Somebody's gonna tell me I said it wrong. Probably. <laughs> To admit in all of the tanks that I put this in it is doing fairly well except for the crystal shrimp tank so um, it didn't do well in there which kind of to be expected um, one of the bigger differences in that tank is that I am not uh, supplementing the water column at all so it is pretty much lacking any kind of hardness that's for sure and CO2 is kind of minimal. I wouldn't say there's none, but I am injecting some CO2, nothing too nuts. Uh, so that's probably the, the main big differences, I would say. Uh, if you were to just kind of keep it real basic, I would say that's, that's probably the main key factors as to why that one didn't do, why it hasn't done as well in there. But Alas, um, we'll just grow it in a tank that it likes to grow in, right? We've got some more on the other side of this tank that's doing equally as well. But I think that'll fill in nice because the Ludwigia is going to get taller. The Persicaria is going to get taller. And then uh, I can continue to worry about this Ludwigia Sferocarpa down here down in the front so let's see we want this to plant this so that we can see it pretty good all right that's going pretty swell and this has a little bit of clump of hair algae there let's go ahead and get rid of that I don't want to encourage weird little bits of algae So 
Look at how cool this is. This is so cool. Cool, cool, cool plant. And then this one I'm gonna leave right there, um, right where it is. I'm not actually gonna move that one at all. But this little piece here, give that a little better planting. Okay. Now, some of these Ludwigia pieces, I'm actually gonna stick them back further, even further back. Thanks for tuning in today. Had a lot of fun messing around in the aquarium. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button because it tells the robots who you like and who you don't like. If that's not enough for you and you wanna join up our community, hit up the Patreon link down below or hit the join button down below and it'll link to our Discord where you'll be able to come by, chat with me and a whole bunch of other people in our community about what's going on. You can send pictures, we can talk about what's happening. You know, we could even wait for you to test your water, to answer a question, to see what's happening. Uh, we have a lot of people on there that have other talents than I do, you know, when it comes to like breeding snails, uh, plecos, uh, a whole bunch of other fish, that's for sure. Um, Alyssa is on there. Uh, Bentley is on there. A bunch of other people are on there. I don't want to start having to try to name everybody's names, but we have a bunch of people on there with a lot of really good experience. Um, they're good people, and it's a lot of fun to be able to chat with a little bit of stuff that's going on. So I think there's big value in it. You might think there's zero value in it, but that's where we're at. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. I'll talk to you all later. At the later time, there's a later time. I don't know when the later time is, but we're out. Uh, 